Are you tired of being poor? How would you like to be making $30,000 a month by being your own boss, setting your own hours and deciding your own life? That's right, I used to be a poor little citizen of America like you until I discovered this handy method in order to make millions. That's right, I was once living in a tiny one bedroom apartment but now I own property all over the city and it's all from setting my own hours, being my own boss and having the confidence necessary to become a millionaire. But how can you decide your own future? Future and be your own boss. Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to pull it off. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Empire of Sin, the latest game released by Paradox Interactive. Well, it's not actually out yet. I've got early access to the game, and you know what that means? That means I get the premium edition with all of the fantastical exploits that the developers haven't discovered yet. Now, what is Empire of Sin, I hear you ask? Well, it's a very interesting game because it is a perfect amalgamation of XCOM mixed with Gangster Tycoon. That's right, you're playing a mob boss in the fantastical prohibition era of America. And you're trying to smuggle alcohol in and out of your various speakeasies, generating stupid amounts of money whilst also gunning down all of your rivals. Today, however, we'll be taking our lovely crime empire and doing something the developers have not intended at all. Slight side note, thank you very much developers for paying for this video, of course, because it is sponsored, because they paid me and now I get to go and destroy their child in front of them. Isn't it just lovely? So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you have a nice cup of non-alcoholic tea in front of you, you've saluted the picture of the queen hanging above your computer, and of course, you're feeling particularly majestic, you can even like the video. Now let's jump into a brand new game. Now in this game, there are a whole bunch of different characters that you can play that all have incredible abilities and bonuses. Now the thing is, there are no British bosses in this game, so instead we must go for the second best. It's Mabel Riley, ladies and gentlemen. She is absolutely terrifyingly incredible. Why is that? Well, it's because she has some very unique bonuses. She has a completely and utterly perfectly balanced diplomacy feature because she comes with the fair price bonus, meaning all trade deals with the AI have a plus 10% chance of being accepted. This basically can be completely and utterly broken in every single trade deal with the AI and trust me, it's going to allow us to pull off this exploit at an even more terrifying rate. Doesn't actually matter which mob boss you pick ladies and gentlemen, but Mabel Riley here is definitely the best suited for the job. Also her boss ability is just terrifying. She has a one hit kill AOE attack that can just kill free people through walls. It's not fair. But anyway, I love it. Let's get into this game. Now naturally, we're just going to be playing on all of the default settings. We can crank up the enemy factions a fair bit, play on the standard difficulty, and let's throw ourselves into the game. And here we go. We start out our lovely empire in the fantastic Chinatown. We're of course going to skip the tutorial. We don't need the tutorial at all, because we start out the game in a very interesting situation. We have 10,000 colonial currency in the bank. We make $186 per turn. That is entirely off the back of our three little buildings. Our one safe house that produces a small amount of alcohol but more importantly stores everything. Our speakeasy where we sell the alcohol that we produce and more importantly our brewery where we produce alcohol. Now at the moment we don't make that much money. However there are several things we can do which will soon convert our empire into becoming the most terrifying and formidable force this entire continent has ever seen. So what we're going to do is not actually start out the game by trying to get ourselves set up. Instead we're going to meet as many other AI factions as possible. You see, we're not the only bosses in town. There's other bosses going around setting up their businesses, and there's even random kind of like city-state AI factions. Now, we've discovered the Soutis gang. They're our first rival boss, and what we're going to do is just introduce ourselves and have a lovely little sit-down with them. Now, basically, business agreements with rival bosses means you gain some of their bonuses and they gain some of your bonuses. So if we're in an agreement with any of these other bosses, they gain our lovely casino buffs. So we've given this lovely lovely boss a improvement to his casinos. He's given us an improvement to two buildings that we're not really going to actually use. That's fine. It's generally just a good thing to do, not because we actually care about business agreements and modifiers, but instead because we really care about making stupid quantities of money. However, there are more factions than just the ones we have in our starting area, which means I'm actually going to just immediately travel to the next area. We're going to hop on a taxi and go to the northeast side, because I know that there are going to be businesses and other AI factions around here which we can make money from. Now, of course, gangsters aren't just the only people on the streets. There are, of course, police officers running around, but like all good 
gangster simulation games, the police officers are only police officers when it actually financially suits them. So with enough money, anyone can be your friend. Oh my goodness, today things are going to get very spicy very quickly. I've accidentally wandered down a back alleyway where there is a thug who is protecting a crate. Now I'm going to have to kill this thug and uh, steal his loot because hopefully there's some good stuff in that chest. However, at the same time, a nearby policewoman has discovered that there is a armed combat going on down this alleyway here. So whilst we're busy doing lovely XCOM combat, oh my goodness, he just shot me in the kneecap, the police officer is slowly making their way towards us. But it's okay, there we go, we've just murdered an armed thug. And now all I have to do is wait for the police lady to come. All right now, here comes the police lady. Fantastic stuff. We're going to use our super duper special swindled shot here. This is our special attack, which we can use every five turns. This is going to hit a target no matter what, and we can basically just mark her with it. And uh, lo and behold, it's pretty powerful. There we go, she's lost 55 hit points and has just died. Now this has of course upset the Chicago Police Department by quite a hefty amount. <laughs> they are not happy at all. But it's okay because I managed to get this little stash of items. Oh my goodness was this a good stash of items. We've discovered a very fancy M19. I mean, am I going to use it? I might as well. It's worth 19 grand so uh, we'll take that. Now of course we did just murder a police officer which has made the local law enforcement very upset so they are more likely to raid us or attack us or just investigate our businesses so we're going to have to do something about that and don't worry we will because as you can see every faction we can encounter can be traded with in our case the faction of the police have a minus 26 opinion of us mostly because i killed a police officer but that will improve over time and after it's completely improved we're going to bribe them to improve relations now there are various assets in the game not just the items that your characters have which hold great value but also the alcohol that you produce alcohol is basically the main trading resource of this entire game you need it for running your businesses and you will also often trade it with other AI factions. So there we go, we've met four AI factions, I'd say that's quite good for one day, so it's probably time for us to head on home to Chinatown. Now as I mentioned, alcohol is a very important trading resource in this game. You can basically trade alcohol to anyone. Let's for example talk to our lovely friend Angelo Gina of the Gina crime family. If we were to trade with him, we could buy 42 of his swill. Swill is the lowest quality alcohol in the game. Now this game has an interesting mechanic, which is that when you trade alcohol, you can disguise it as another type of alcohol. So if we were to sell Gina here, say one of our barrels of swill, of which we have 30, we could actually disguise it as premium top shelf beer bottles. Now, this is worth a lot more than actual swill, so we'd basically be making more money. We're going to be buying all of the swill off of Gina here. Now, swill is a very low quality alcohol, meaning it's exceedingly cheap to buy. Swill is valued at around about $2 per swill. Now, this is where the game kind of immediately starts breaking down because we're doing an offer to buy 42 barrels of swill which usually go for two dollars each for ever so slightly less than two dollars each yes that's right we're spending 71 dollars to buy 42 barrels of swill we're going to confirm this trade he's of course going to agree in fact he's going to like that trade then we're going to offer him a trade back what if i was to sell him 42 barrels of swill and ask for say more than the 71 that i paid for them well of course he's going to accept because this is the ai and so we're Immediately, we found an infinite money exploit where you can just drain everything from the AI. The only downside is this is actually working in small quantities, and I generally like to make more than just $30 per trade. Anyway, we're going to buy all of the swill back, and in fact, we're going to do it in a very favorable trading way, so that way he quite enjoys trading with us. And now we have a collection of 722 swill in our reserve, but we've not finished yet, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be buying all of the garbage swill off of all of the AI factions in the game. So once again, we're going to buy 41 swill off of Ray here he's going to love it this man loves us so much he's willing to buy 10 swills for 27 cash effectively he's willing to pay around about 2.5 when really this item is only worth two but wait ladies and gentlemen even though that exploit is completely and utterly broken there's more because as i mentioned previously when you're selling items like say swill you don't actually have to be honest about what you're selling so ladies and gentlemen where are we now just a few moments into the game well we have ten thousand dollars in the bank and i've traded with with every single AI to gain all of their swill. We now have an incredible 184 swill in reserve. In total, to buy all of this swill, it costs us a devastating $200 to buy. So logically, all we need to do is to sell this for more than $200 and everything's gone well. So how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to hop into the diplomacy section and go on over to the Shield Street Slayers. This is a neutral faction with a infinite supply of money. That's right, these guys have a infinite
solid quantity of money, and if we were to sell them one barrel of swill each, we could trade this to them for an incredible $388. This, however, is not enough. So we won't be selling them swill. No, instead, we could sell them premium rack and make $970. Or more excitingly, we can disguise this effectively backwash and label it as fancy whiskey. And suddenly this garbage swill is now worth an incredible $9,700. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to send it off because we're bam. They've agreed to the trade and we've just doubled our starting money right the way up to 20,000. How did we do it? Well, we bought absolute garbage that is in mass supply, repackaged it as something much more fancy and sold it for massive profit. But what are we going to do with all of our money? Well, for a start, I think it makes sense for us to get the police off our backs. Although we're going to have to wait about 22 weeks for the negative effects of killing a police officer to go away. So in that time, we're simply going to spend some of our money by setting up a few casinos, ladies and gentlemen, because casinos are a great way of making money. So we're bam, for only $9,000 this is going to become our very own casino. Well, bam, isn't it lovely? Now, through no fault of our own, the local Jenner crime family has marked our very own speakeasy uh, to get taken down, but don't worry, that actually doesn't really make any difference for us. And in fact, we're going to sell this speakeasy because speakeasies are terrible. We want casinos, ladies and gentlemen. Casinos are where the money's at. So, well, bam, now we have two casinos and we're producing our very own alcohol, although calling swill alcohol is quite an overstatement. Now, I'd actually like to improve my lovely alcohol, not to actually increase the quality of alcohol that we can produce, but rather increase the amount that we can produce. So I'm going to spend about three grand upping our production, and then another 2,700 increasing it yet again. There we go, lovely stuff. We can now produce swill at terrifying rates. Oh, and it's finally happened. The Gina crime family has declared war on our gang. Uh, this is very exciting because effectively, they massively outnumber us. We are a single gangster with only three rackets. They have 17 gangsters and seven rackets. Uh, Things are not looking great for us, however, it's okay, because it's physically impossible for me to lose the game. Why is that? Well, it's because we're about to become extravagantly wealthy, because we are once again buying all of the garbage alcohol off of all of the AI. Right, now after my lovely cheeky trades, we now have 195 swill in the bank. Uh, this is good, because we can actually completely destroy the AI here. For example, we can talk to Reagan Colt here, and we actually have enough money to steal his very own unique handgun. Now, his unique handgun is absolutely insane insane because it has so many different modifiers increasing its chance to do critical damage. And the best thing is, the fact that it comes with plus 45% critical chance isn't even the end of it. You can stack on even more modifiers. Now of course it's going to take a lot for us to get him to part with his very special gun, so we'll offer him a garbage shotgun that we found, but more importantly a whole bunch of swill disguised as whiskey. Now is that enough for his gun? It is. Now let's wind back some of the swill then. So there we go, for only the low low cost of a single short barrel shotgun gun and 125 swill disguised as whiskey, Reagan here is going to give us his very unique handgun. Now, of course, you might be thinking, what happens if Reagan discovers that this is just swill disguised as whiskey? Isn't he going to get his gun back? No. The trade deal will have still happened, or the will change is that he might get a minor mood modifier with us, which can easily be negated. Anyway, we're going to just confirm this trade deal. Well, bam, he's very happy, and we've got ourselves a brand new gun. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's time for us to ambush the guards. Now, naturally, we are playing as Mabel Riley, who is, in this universe, effectively God. Because we can use the Swindler's shot immediately out the gate to massacre as many of these guards as possible. There we go. Look at that. Four people all hit with the same bullet. <laughs> Oh my goodness, she is terrifying. Of course, the Gina crime family aren't so happy that all of this is going on, and the Saltis gang is mostly just trying to leave the combat area, along with anyone who isn't one of my own personal bodyguards. Oh, you try and kill Mabel. She's got 150 hit points, my friend. It's going to take a lot more than two point-blank shotgun rounds to the chest. Right, now it's time for me to pull out the old legendary. We're going to swap weapons, that's right. And now we've pulled out our pistol. Now our pistol is very special because it has a 45% chance to do critical damage. Critical damage is 60, which is absolutely insane this early on in the game. And we're bam. Oh, it's brilliant. I do love this combat. Oh my goodness, can we throw a dynamite stick? Sure, why not? Let's just lob a dynamite stick in the middle of a city. What could go wrong? Civilian casualties are just a number. You can throw them for miles! Okay, right, that's great. Uh, now, apparently the police didn't honestly mind that much that we just had an explosive gang war in the streets of Chicago. I mean, we threw two lit sticks of dynamite in a heavily populated area, but apparently that's only minus three relations, so that's all good. Bam, I've jumped into the midpoint of the video when you were least 
expecting me, ladies and gentlemen. Why have I done this? Well, I've done it to try and promote the greatest scam of all time. That's right, a scam even more powerful than the one you're currently watching. This is, of course, the famous scam of breaking YouTube by liking a video and then maybe even subscribing to the content creator. My goodness, a combination of these two things is enough to scam the algorithm and rocket our very insane little community up into the stratosphere. So feel free to pull off this simple scam now. Anyway, let's get back into the video. I've got some very poor quality alcohol to produce. Now our crime empire is doing rather well. We've grown to quite a decent size and very shortly we'll be having a sit down with the lovely Jenna crime family. Not Let's do it right now. We've stolen two of their casinos, so we might as well bring an end to the war. And there we go, we're finally at peace. And we've exited that war in a much stronger position than when we entered. Ah, now we've met two more fantastic factions, that's right. And those two new fantastic factions are very important for us because they allow us to buy more alcohol off of the market. That's right, we've met the Donovans, and naturally we're going to be able to buy all of their garbage swill. They have 142 of it in reserve, so we'll be giving them a healthy portion of cash, let's say 330, and they're willing to do business with us. And also we've got the Hipsing Tong, there we go. They've got 177 swill, I will of course be buying all of that, that's incredible. Here we go, take $400 for that, he's going to love that. Right, and now that I have all of this lovely swill, I'm going to be going to one of the random minor factions, the Courtney Blood Lords here, and selling them all 404 of my swill, but not as swill, instead as premium whiskey. This is worth $20,000, because I've stolen all of this from the AI. How much did it cost me to get all of this swill? $300 it cost me, and I'm getting 20 grand for it, and there we go. And there's my incredible supply of money. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's now the 12th of November, 1920 in Chicago, and a few things have changed. Number one, I've done so many combat missions that my character is now locked in this animation state. Um, she kind of just slides around the map now. Other human beings can walk, but instead she prefers to slide with her gun out, although she doesn't even have a gun out. I absolutely love it. Now, more importantly, we've been doing some work behind the scenes to buy ourselves a massive brewery over here. This brewery produces 52 barrels of swill each week. Now, what we need at the moment is basically money. We're mass producing swill, which has guaranteed us a infinite source of income, but what we really need to do is take over Chinatown completely. Not just necessarily militarily, because at the moment we are just one solo person who for some reason has the power of God when it comes to combat, but more so we need to take it over economically. So that means once again it's time for us to sell some of our alcohol. Right, so naturally we're going to trade all of our 768 swill to one of the minor factions, disguise it as whiskey, that's 38 grand in cash. They're of course going to agree, they always will. And using that money we need to actually improve some of our rackets. I mean just look at this. We make up 50% of the earnings in the area. So whilst we make a huge amount of money, we don't occupy all of the rackets and more importantly we don't make up all of the customers. So we need to improve our various businesses to actually pull in even more people. Like say our lovely casino here which has a capacity of 200 people is not able to actually reach its maximum value because it's not drawing in enough customers. So we're going to be sinking a huge amount of money into improving it. Right so with all of our casinos improving eventually we'll hit a lovely point where we have total control of the area. Now I have noticed that the near south side region is very special because there are actually no AI factions in control of this region. So I'm thinking that I should probably go in there and get myself set up. Oh it's now 1921 ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Pretty sure that means an entire year has passed for us which is a great sign because we're making fantastic quantities of money and our notoriety is nice and high. Now what I'm going to do is sell all of the current alcohol we have to this lovely random faction here. All 611 swill disguise it as whiskey get 30 grand in cash. Now that means we have 53,000 in the bank and so what I'm going to do with all of that fantastic new money is actually buy myself a brand new brewery in this new region here. There we go it's going to be fantastic and produce us a whole bunch of lovely beverages. Oh and my notoriety has increased meaning I've gained a lovely boost. Fantastic stuff. There we go and all of the ambience and word of mouth upgrades are now starting to come in for my various little empires. It means we'll now start being able to eat into the various customer pools of our competitors. Right all I have to do is just attack the remaining rackets which are available and then I should be able to basically start my complete and utter monopoly. Right so there we have it we now control the majority of the rackets have the majority of the earnings. All we need to do is steal the majority of the customers and then we've gained complete control. And we've just picked up our final talent which is rapid reload which means reloading my pistol no longer consumes an action meaning I can reload my pistol indefinitely which is very important for this next perk that we're going to pick up. The kill chain perk which is fire a shot at the target if the target is killed your turn does 
not end and instead you regain 1 AP. This is an insane skill to have because remember we have a pistol which is a one hit kill. It costs one single AP to fire and if we can keep firing it, well then our turn simply never ends. Oh my goodness, there we go ladies and gentlemen, I've done it. I've just taken over a small little clan and that was enough to give us control of Chinatown. So we've started our very own empire and there we have it. We control this entire neighborhood which gives us a boost to all of our lovely little casinos to make them even more powerful and things are looking fantastic. The only issue is it has massively increased our notoriety and sure it has leveled me up a few times but being supremely good at everything isn't necessarily what you want because that increase in notoriety has sadly impacted our relationship with the police. That's right we're down to just plus 56 relation with them. Oh my goodness how devastating. Also it's around about times like these we should probably take a look at gaining another member to our party. Now I want to hire Patrick the Pebble Grady here because he's an insane box of an absolutely incredible melee statistic and the reasoning behind it is simple because I've worked out if I can stack enough melee bonus modifiers we should be able to create a character that can also one hit everyone. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen a nice amount of time has passed and I've accrued 3384 barrels of just alcohol in general and I'm going to be selling a huge amount of it to of course a random minor faction so there you go take all of this it's a great thing to do because minor factions have an unlimited supply of wealth for some reason meaning I can get 163,000 in cash from them that's brilliant because that means I can upgrade all of my breweries to maximum but more importantly I've invested some of that money into getting a few more friends so we've got two more friends to join the legendary immortal Mabel Riley we've got Bao Chaiung who is effectively a terrifying grenade throwing lunatic and Patrick Grady who is of course that insane melee man who has the ability to basically one hit everyone now we're going to go to all of the Gina crime family because they hate us and also we might as well uh, it does involve taking out a huge amount of armed guards on the street but it'll be fine right now it's time for us to attack the Gina crime family apparently we have a 34% chance of winning because they have 11 guards and we have three uh, this is of course incorrect because we are going to absolutely smash them so let the fun begin all right it's time to just throw a grenade at literally everyone let's go look at that bad boy. Now what I can do is have Patrick Grady draw fire from everyone. This means everyone in the area has to target him, which is basically everyone on the map, and equally he has a 40% damage resistance. I've also kitted him out with some government issue body armor, meaning he is an absolute nightmare to try and murder. Alright, now in comes everyone to try and attack Patrick Grady. Of course, it's not actually really going to work. Congratulations, you hit him for one damage. <laughs> oh my god, Patrick Grady is an immortal. This is terrifying. Right now Patrick is thankfully in melee range of just about everyone, uh, meaning he can begin his fun stuff. All right, go hit him with the meat cleaver, Patrick. Oh, fantastic. All right, uh, we've taken this 3v11 into a 3v1. Uh, it's happened pretty much instantaneously. Might as well go kill this final person. All right, go Mabel, do your jazz. Wabam, perfectly balanced. Critical attack damage of 72 there. Now, I feel like it's probably a good time to declare war on the Gina crime family. We might as well. So let's go to war. Oh, here we go. Gina's actually in here. There is, it's Angelo Gina, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? I'm just going to shoot at him twice. Let's just shoot once. There we go. Critical hit, 36 damage. You know, we can actually shoot at him three times in a turn by using double shot. So um, we'll do that. And he's almost dead on turn one. Right, now let's just kill Gina before he can even have his first turn. There we go, he's dead. Fantastic. All right, let me just finish off these guards with my pistol. I might as well. Oh my goodness, the amount of critical damage I can do is insane. All right, there we go. That's the one remaining guard dead. And Gina... Gina's land is now ours. Oh my goodness, and because I killed him, the entire empire is now mine. Sorry, we only have to kill the bosses to take their empire. What the heck? If it's that easy, I can just win the game instantly. I mean, I have infinite money. I can just hire infinite guards, right? And then I'm guaranteed to win every single combat. Right, next up is the Saltis gang because they control some territory over here. So we might as well just also murder their leader. Uh, so it's four guards versus our men. Uh, satisfied, we'll get them murdered off. That's no problem. In fact, we can pretty much use the swindler shot as an opener here. All right, here we go. Patrick uses the draw fire ability, reducing the damage he takes. And now let's also cleave someone. Ah, lovely. Oh my goodness, it's a 100% chance to hit on everyone now. All right, let's just one hit this guard. Let's do a double shot on this guard. Crit and crit again. <laughs> Mabel, you are terrifying. Now look at them try and, of course, attack our lovely Patrick here. They can't actually damage Patrick, though. He is simply too powerful. There we go. Fantastic. What an attack. So I sat through an entire combat with the soldier his gang as you can imagine uh, it was actually slightly easy other than the fact that I accidentally lost Mabel Riley pretty early on in the combat because I walked her 
in front of about 700 men. If she hadn't died, probably could have won this almost instantly. But nonetheless, things are looking fantastic. We've collected a whole bunch of stuff. We're able to take over this safe house, turn it into whatever we like. There we go. And now, because I've killed Joseph Sautis, their entire empire is now mine, which is absolutely fantastic because it means I now have an alcohol income of 501, which is kind of insane. Because look at this lovely empire. Almost all of the entire district of Chinatown is now owned by me. And we produce alcohol at such a terrifying rate, meaning that we're making about every week almost 500 swill. And that 500 swill is equivalent to 24,000 in cash. All right, now we're just going to go and kill these guards here because we might as well. They're standing out in the middle of a street somewhere. So it's always a good time to test my 100% chance to hit 100% chance to crit pistol. Yep, that's fine. Uh, what combat this is. All right, now I'm going to be invading Little Italy, not because there's really much of a reason to invade Little Italy, but rather the fact that they have lots of derelict buildings that if I take over, I can convert into producing alcohol. Into the fug infested derelict building we go. Apparently we get to always open up the game with a round of fire, which is great. All right, now we're going to of course start with the incredible swindler shot, just because we can, and this time it's going to kill four people in one go, because it goes through people. Did I mention that? Yes, it, of course it does. Oh my goodness, this is just a massacre. This is like when Anakin killed the younglings. Right, now I think the final thing we do in this video is we attack Goldie Garno. Now we have basically infinite money. I've taken over three more massive breweries, meaning our small production is up to 677 barrels per week, which is just insane. And immediately I've just teleported into Goldie's safe house and we're going to finish her off almost instantaneously, especially using my personal brand new favorite achievement, which is Kill Chain, which is fire a shot at the target. If the target is killed, your turn does not end and you simply regain another action point. So for example, I can aim at this person here, get my critical hit off and my turn does not end. And guess what? It continues. <laughs> oh goodness. Anyway, let's quickly do a double shot and finish off this guard. Oh my goodness, one HP. Wait, that didn't even end my turn. Of course it didn't because now I can do a kill chain on that same guard that I shot. Oh my goodness, this is not okay. And then let me guess, I can do another kill chain, can I? Yep, there is just no end to the amount of kill chain I'm allowed to do apparently. Let's shoot the guard across the street. Oh, 66, very nice. That man just missed all of his shots. Great job. Turn one, yeet an entire bomb. There we go, fantastic. Right, let's go immediately take out her safe house. Now, combat in this game is no longer particularly very fair, considering that just about everyone can be one shot these days. Oh my goodness, here comes Goldie Gardo. Here we go. Now, she's got a whole lot of armor, and because she's a boss, it's harder to actually do critical damage damage to her. However, what we can do is do a nice little double shot of 69 and then 13 damage. That's a shame that it didn't crit. Maybe I could just swap weapon. Yeah, if I swap weapon to the Tommy gun and then do burst fire. <gasps> Oh, yes. Oh, it's so perfectly balanced. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, that has lowered our relations with the Chicago police by five, but it's okay. We can boost that up almost immediately. We stole her unique weapon and we completely eliminated everything they had. Well, there you have it. We've basically taken over three of the major factions in this game, stolen their entire empires, and now we kind of control a little bit of everything. There is no way to stop us simply because we produce so much alcohol. Admittedly, it's cheap garbage alcohol, but the reason we produce cheap garbage garbage alcohol is because you draw less suspicion when producing less alcoholic beverages, meaning the police will never raid us, not that they ever would because we're bribing them huge amounts of money so that they eternally love us. So we're immune to the police, the other factions are too terrified to attack us, but even if they do, we have legendary heroes that are so overpowered they can take out forces about 700 times their size. Well there you have it ladies and gentlemen, this has been an absolutely perfectly balanced look into the upcoming paradox game Empire of Sin. I have actually really enjoyed my time in this game. Now you don't have to, but Paradox have given me a fun little link to the game, which will be pinned in the comment section. But yes, if you're a fan of XCOM and you like this kind of setting, then I'd strongly recommend you put this one on your watch list. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching our incredible rise to power, which was literally just entirely facilitated by scamming every single person we ran into. And it turns out if you do scam people, you will soon become the most powerful person in reality. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, then feel free to give it a like. And heck, why not hop on down into the comments? section and tell me what your favorite scam was. Maybe it's a scam you've done, maybe just a scam you've heard of. I 100% promise I won't be writing them down to try and pull off later in the future. I'm going to make sure to be active in the comment section of this video because I'm sure there's many many fun stories out there that I'd love to hear about from you. As always of course a massive thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously pat yourselves on the back and go treat yourselves to an extra special cup of tea. Anyway I'll be seeing each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day ladies 
ladies and gentlemen, and goodbye for now. <laughs>